everyone, my name is Sarah Penick and today we're going to be talking about something that is very important to me as a single person. So um, if you are single, this, this video isn't necessarily aimed towards you, but it is I guess it's kind of about you because it's about me. It's I'm going to be talking about um, things I wish people would stop doing when they find out I'm single. Um, so if you are single and you have the desire to get married and you are sad that you are not married, I mean, I'm not judging you. I think, I mean, that's a, a real human emotion. And just because I don't feel that way, which I, I mean, I don't, I, I'm not sad that I'm still single. Just because we don't feel the same way doesn't mean you're wrong. And it doesn't mean I'm right. It just means we're different. And it's okay that there are lots of different people in the world. So, um, yeah, I don't want you to feel like I don't, don't like you. You're, I think you're okay. Um, that's just not the perspective I'm coming from. That's all. Um, there are actually two different perspectives I'm coming from. <clears throat> the first one is single people who do not desire marriage. For my whole life, I did not desire to get married. I just didn't want to. It wasn't a thing I wanted. Ever since I can remember, it was just never a thing I wanted. Like, I never had my Barbies get married, my to stuffed animals never got married, I never pretended to get married, I was like too busy having adventures, like pretending to go on adventures to save the world. I mean, I didn't, it just wasn't something I wanted. Um, like, I never wanted to. That was just the way it is, the way it was. And I'm, there may be a reason other than I just didn't care. I didn't care to. I didn't want to. Um, I think, and I know what that reason might be if it's accurate and I don't want to talk about it, especially not in this video because it's not the point of the video. Um, it's just, I didn't want to. And then when I like got into middle school age, so I got to be like 11, 13, was in high school, so like 16, um, Everyone, except my parents, everyone in the church was communicating to me. Like, every, like, every aspect of the church, except for the Christian Heroes Then and Now series by Janet and Jeff Benj, which is published by Youth with a Mission. Like, that was the only one. But all the other aspects of the Christian culture and my parents and like one other person except for them all people all Christians I was interacting with were communicating to me that the only way I could please and obey God was to get married and have kids I'd probably be a stay-at-home mom or get married and be a missionary or if, if I'm going to stay single I had to be a missionary in a third world country that was the only way I could obey God only way I could be like getting married or if heaven forbid if I stayed single being a missionary in a third world country were the only ways I could fulfill my potential and destiny as being a Christian 
I'm a woman and a human being. Those are the only ways I could obey God. Those are the only ways I could please God. I kid you not, that is what the church was communicating to me. And I already did not have the desire to get married. And then when people started communicating that to me, I just... The idea of getting married was so abhorrent to me that I sort of, kind of, not really toyed with the idea of maybe converting to Catholicism so I could become a nun. But I was kind I was seriously trying to figure out if there was like a Protestant Christian version of being a nun. Because I was just so opposed to getting married. Because I just, I did not have the desire to. And then everyone was saying that in order to obey God, the only way I could obey God was to get married. And have kids. And then the world, like all the non-Christian stuff, says you have to find your significant other in order to be happy, in order to be fulfilled, in order to reach your potential as a human being. And as a woman. It doesn't have to be man, the world says, but you have to find your significant other or you're sad and lonely forever and ever and ever. And so, like, no matter which way I turned, I had these people saying, you have to not be alone. Like, as if single people aren't, can't, like, have companionship through friends and pets. And most importantly, Jesus. Not saying Jesus was my boyfriend or whatever, because that's sacrilegious. But, um, Jamie Grace has a video all about Jesus is not your boyfriend. I recommend you look it up. It's very, very good. But anyway... Um, but, so I was just like, no, I don't want to. God calls some people to not get married. And that's where the, um, some of the missionaries whose biographies, Janet and Jeff Benj, Benji, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. I've never heard it spoken. <coughs> but, um. Some of the missionaries, there most of them are women, but there was one man. They obeyed God with everything they had, everything they were, everything they did, everything they said, everything about them. They obeyed God, and they never got married. And I held them up as, like, examples. Like, these people made God happy. These people pleased God and obeyed him with everything they could and they never got married. So that means I don't have to get married in order to obey God. And so I have that perspective. And then since about December 2012, I have been really seeking God and um and, like, trying to get to know him better, trying to be who he's called me to be, and just really trying to seek him. And, um, and, um, and so this is May, the end of May 2020, so since 2012, so that's since December 2012, so that's, let's see, that's been seven and a half years, approximately. And about, I think like four years ago, I told God, like I was trying to be open to whatever he was calling me to do, calling me to, and I told him, if you want me to get married, you're going to have to give me the desire." Because I don't want to. But if you want me to get married, I want to obey you. But marriage is so important, I want, I need to want to. So I'm not going 
So I need you to give me the desire to, if that's in your will for me. And I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm not going to folk, like, try to make myself or try to figure it out, whatever. I'm just going to. And I told God I was just going to, um, <clears throat> like, focus on seeking him and getting to know him better and getting to know myself better and, like, improving as a person. And by then I had started seeing my therapist. And so I was going to focus on healing from all my mental illnesses. And I I was just going to focus on those. And I did. And he slowly developed the desire within me to get married. So, so now, because of Jesus, because of him working in my heart, I now desire to get married. However, I know that since God put that, I mean, it's obvious God put that desire in me because there's no other explanation because I didn't want to and I didn't do anything to try to like make myself want to. It just happened. And um, so I know that desire is from God and since, and that was like part of the criteria is like, if you want me to get married, give me the desire to. So I know he wants me to get married, so I'm going to get married someday. And so I know it's going to happen someday. And so I'm okay with the fact that I'm still single. I, uh, I'm still single. I've never been on a single date in my entire life. I've been sing continuously single since the day I was conceived. I'm still single and I'm okay with it. Because I know I'll get married someday. And so I have the those two very different perspectives of not wanting to get married at all and wanting to get married but I'm still but I'm okay with being single too. I'm like I'm fine. I'm not sad about not being married. So those are my two perspectives. And I know there are people who are mourning the fact that they're not married yet. And like I said, I'm not I'm not like judging you. That I mean that's just not my perspective and it's okay. So I'm just wanting to explain my perspectives. And so since... And so... Those are the perspectives I'm going to be speaking from. I'm sure... People who desire marriage and are mourning the fact that they're not married yet... Will relate to a lot of what I'm going to be saying. That's just not a perspective I have, so I can't speak for them. Because I just don't know. So I can't really speak for you if that's you. Um, but this, but as someone who didn't want to get married, and now someone who wants to get married but is very content and at peace with not being married yet, I have some things I want to tell everybody to s please stop doing. Don't, don't pity me. Don't pity those of us who are still single. I mean, if someone's sad because they're still single, then like Romans 12 something. I mean, read all of Romans 12, but I can't remember the exact verse. 15? 16 something but it says be happy with those who are happy and mourn with those who mourn so you can like sit in the sorrow with someone be like i see you really want to be married and you're not and you don't understand why and i'm sorry and you sit there and be sad with them that's like, the Bible commands us to have empathy. So, I mean, yeah. But don't pity us. We're not pathetic. We're not pitiable. We're 
not like, it's not a tragedy. It's not a tragedy that we're single. And a lot, oh my goodness. When people would say, when I would tell people that I didn't want to get married, they'd be like, oh, that's so sad. It's not sad. Okay. I'm just different from you. It's not sad when someone does not want to get married. Jesus and the Apostle Paul both talked about how God gifts people. He gives people the gift of celibacy and the, of being able to be celibate and being able to not get married. That is a gift. The Bible calls it a gift. It is not sad. It's not pathetic. It's not something you need to pity. Okay? I I just cannot with people who think it's sad because someone doesn't want to get married. I am so angry about that. Because it's not sad. It's just different from you. Okay? It's different from you. Just because something is different from you doesn't make it bad or sad. Okay? It's not sad when people so when someone does not want to get married. There might be trauma that the person is dealing with from their from whatever. Or like they were raised in an extremely unhealthy and dysfunctional home where they did not witness a healthy marriage and they may even have witnessed abuse within the marriage and have been abused by one or both of their parents. And that is what ca is causing them to not want to get married. That is a possibility. And the fact that that happened to the person is sad. But them wanting to not get married is not sad. Okay? And, but a lot of people who don't want to get married, they just don't have that desire. God has not put that desire in them. And that's not sad. That just means God made them that way. Or, or he does plan for them to get married someday, but... They're not at that place yet where they're ready to start dating or whatever. And so he hasn't awoken that desire in them because they're just not ready. It's not sad. It's just the way they are. And it's very insulting to think that it's sad and pathetic and terrible that this person doesn't want to get married. It's just they don't want to. It's not... They're not like you. And that's not a bad thing. We need a huge variety of people in the world. And that includes people who don't want to get married. It's fine. Um. Oh my. Allergies. My least favorite. Okay. Um. Another thing is people who think it's sad because someone's single, but they want to get married. It's like, oh, you can go date Johnny or whatever. You're like, Johnny's single? Let me introduce you to him. It's like, stop being a matchmaker. No one needs that. Like, I, you don't know... Who's right for me? Okay? Stop it. And that's that's another thing is people thinking that they need to hook up all the single people in their lives. Maybe we are not dating for a reason. There are reasons people don't date or are not currently dating. Um, 
I joined the Campus Crusade for Christ group at my college, partly because I'm, I'm sure many of them are not meaning to, but the, the non-Christian, um, many of the non-Christian professors, and honestly, just a lot of the material we have to learn in college, unless you're going to a Bible college, tries to draw you away from God and away from the Bible. And uh, my community college is not a Christian college. And so I'm, I'm in the Christian group, Campus Crusade for Christ, to try to put, intentionally put things in my life to help redirect me to God. So that is a very major reason of why I joined. I also joined because I want friends. I want a social, I want the social group with people sort of my age. I mean, I'm going to be 26 in a couple months. Everybody else is under 20. Well, not everybody else, but almost everybody else is under 20. I'm not kidding. I'm older than two of the leaders. So, but they're, they're close to my age. And we're going through, we're all going through college together. So we have similar, um, similar life circumstances going on. But, um, another reason I joined is because I desire to get married. And I want to meet a Christian man. I want to date slash court Christians, Christian men who firmly believe in the Bible and are trying to obey and serve and know God. And I'm, I mean, I go to women's Bible studies, like you're, I'm not going to meet my future husband in a women's Bible study. So I'm going to a co-ed group to try to meet guys. That's one of the reasons. Now, if I end up not dating any of them, that's okay. I will have made male friends. And so, in addition to all my female friends. And... I want my friend, my friendships to be well-rounded, and that includes being friends with the opposite gender. And so, um, and then if I have male friends I hang out with, if I'm dating a guy who says he's a Christian and sort of seem, and seems to be a Christian, but it turns out he's tricking me and is a manipulative jerk, hopefully my male friends will be able to see this. And warn me and say, hey, he's not a good guy. And my female friends may not see that. So, even if none of the men I ever meet in Campus Crusade for Christ end up being a guy I even date, much less my future husband, that's okay. However, that being said, because of some certain life circumstances, and I'm not talking about the COVID-19 pandemic, which we're in, my state is in phase one of the coming out of quarantine from that. Yeah, I'm not going to pretend I fully understand that. But, um, the life circumstances I'm talking about are, have nothing to do with the COVID-19 pandemic. There are some life circumstances that make it so I can't go to, um, other groups like other bible studies that are co-ed and um and so i can't seek god and look for guys and other friends at those groups just because it's not gonna work it's not working in my life in the season of life i'm in right now 
And so I'm not dating. And that's not bad. That's not sad. That's not tragic. That's just the season of life I'm in. You know, I have so many things I'm trying, I'm figuring out right now. I am in college. I have a job on my college campus. I am learning how to budget. I'm learning how to balance a checkbook. I'm learning how to save money. I'm learning how to not spend all my money. I'm learning how to not spend all my money on crap I don't need. I'm learning how to, I'm just learning how to be an adult right now. But you're like, oh, but you're in your mid-twenties. Why haven't you figured it out by now? That's a topic that I'm not ready to talk about. So, yeah, there's that. But I'm learning, I'm trying to figure out all these things. And I'm also, and so I'm like trying to, and I have stuff I'm still working through with my therapist. And my therapist, oh my goodness, if she watches this video, she might be all like, Sarah, you are being way too much of a perfectionist. I'll be like, shut up, I know. That's one of the things we're still working on. But um, I'm work. I'm still trying to become some guy's Ms. Right. I'm not, I have so many things to be focusing on right now. It's okay that I'm not dating. I am fine. And, um, and one of my cats is being a cat. I was about to say being mysterious, but that's just what cats do. Okay. Um, yeah. If a guy does not, is not okay with living with my cats, then he's obviously not my Mr. Right, because, yeah, I'm, go I'm not going to abandon my cats. Anyway. Um, where was I? I get distracted by furry things. Um, and so it's not sad. It's not a tragedy that I'm not dating. It's just not the season I'm in. Stop pitying people because they're single, or because they don't want to get married, or because they're not dating. Stop pitying us. I have enough pity parties for myself. I don't need other people having pity parties for me. Okay? Stop. It's not sad. It's not pathetic. It's just the way it is. Now, if some... And you don't need to intervene. You don't need to intervene in our lives. If we're happy, if we're content, if we have, if we are, like, seeking out marriage, seeking out potential boyfriends or girlfriends, if, I mean, I'm sure men, I'm sure single guys have to deal with this crap too. If we're seeking it out and we desire marriage, or if we don't desire marriage... You don't need to do anything. We don't need to be fixed for the love of everything. We are not an agenda. We are not a checklist. We are not a project. We do not need to be fixed. Okay? We don't need to be fixed. <coughs> we are fine. Now, if someone desires marriage, and they're sad because they're not married, and they're literally not going places seeking out potential guys, like potential, um, significant others, let's call them. Okay, then you might need to be like, okay, you're not doing anything. You need to go to co-ed Bible studies, okay, and seek God more than anything else, but Look for guys, too. Because you're never going to find the Mr. Right God has for you by sitting at home, not pursuing the relationship. Because, yeah, men need to pursue, but women need to pursue the relationship as well. Like, I read that marriage. I love this analogy. It's not a perfect analogy, 
but it's a good one. Marriage is a box. What you put in is what you get out. This is where the analogy sort of falls apart because if you're in an abusive relationship and you're pouring in all the good things, you're not going to get anything good out because the person is abusive and manipulative. But in a normal relationship, what you put in is what you get out. If you guys are both putting in good things, love and sacrifice and kindness, that's what you're going to be getting out. But if you're putting in selfishness and greed and insisting on being right and you're not sacrificing for the other person, that's what you're going to get out. And so women need to pursue the relationship too. I, um, I don't feel qualified to like talk about should women date, should women ask guys out on dates? I don't know. Um, Tiffany Dawn, Jamie Grace, and Emily Wilson all talk about this kind of stuff, and I'm, I'm planning on linking, like, I'm planning on providing links to, like, their playlists and ch or channels or whatever in the description of this video. Um, they are all married, so they, I feel like they are qualified to talk about this because they've gone through the whole thing and I've never been on a date in my life so yeah but women do need to work on pursuing the relationship just I mean and so do men so it goes both ways so if if a girl wants to get married and she's sad because nobody's married she's not married nobody's asked her out but she doesn't like pursue well friendships with guys that kind of that's when it would be good for you to be like, okay, well, you're not doing anything, so it makes sense that nothing's happening. But that's the only time you need to intervene. Okay? If we are doing what we can, or if we don't want to get married, you don't need to do anything. We're fine. Just chill. Another thing that really irritates me is people, is like, them saying that, like, being married is the epitome of life and obeying God as a Christian woman. Okay, as Emily Wilson has said, I'm par totally paraphrasing her, but still. My life, our lives are not going to start when we get married or when we have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, if you're a guy watching this. Okay, our lives are not going to start then. Our lives are happening right now, right this second. It is minute 33, second 33 of this video, of recording this video. Because I have a lot to say. I'm sorry for those of you. Yeah, long videos. Oh boy, sorry. But, um, this instant, this heartbeat, this breath, my life is happening right now. What are you going to do with your life? Our lives are not going to start when we find our significant other. And marriage is not the epitome of our lives as human beings as women or as men but like I think women are told more you have to have a significant other or your life is not happening it's not the epitome of our lives as women or as human beings or as Christians marriage is not a mountaintop with a plateau afterwards like it's as if like we're com it's communicated to us that we have to get married and then everything will be great. And it'll be the smooth thing for the rest of our lives. And then we'll die. And then it'll get better because we go to heaven. Which, I mean, if you're a Christian, it will get better when you go to heaven. That part is true. But. Marriage is hard. Okay? Even people 
who communicate well and they try their hardest to make it work and to love the other person it's still hard because Christ, because human beings i should say we humans are naturally selfish we are naturally self-centered we naturally don't care about other people this is our natural way of being we naturally only want to think about ourselves and care about ourselves and do what we need to for ourselves should not turn my hand away i injured my wrist like a month ago so yeah i have to sleep in this funky brace anyway and so um what was i saying I got distracted by pain in my arm. I get distracted very easily. I apologize. But, um, marriage is hard because humans, it takes work and effort for us to truly love and care for other people. It takes effort. And that alone makes marriage hard. Again, I'm not married, but I do know this. And I have witnessed marriages, Christian marriages, where the one person was manipulative and they weren't doing the hard work of loving and sacrificing for the other person. They just insisted everything had to be done for them. And that made the marriage that much worse. And that's not, I believe firmly, that's not what God wants for marriage. And so marriage is hard because you have to sacrifice. You have to sacrifice your rights. And so marriage is difficult. That's the long and short of it. And so it's not a mountaintop and a plateau. It's rough mountains and valleys and it's like life except you're doing it with another person okay so it's not the epitome of me being a human and me being a woman and me being a christian i hope to get married someday but i know my life is going to continue until then and after then and it'll be fine. Um, I also really hate, and I really wish people would stop insisting that everyone gets married. You are not God's confidant. God will never, I'm pretty sure I can say an absolute like this. God will never tell a human being his entire plan. Especially for someone else. Jesus is God. And he was here on earth as a human being. And God the Father didn't even tell him all the things. Jesus said that only God the Father knows when the end of the world is coming, when Jesus is coming back to judge everyone and defeat Satan once and for all. Only God the Father knows that. Jesus is God and he did not know that. Okay, Jesus was fully human and fully God and God did not tell him when the end of the world is going to be. No human is ever going to know all of God's plan. And I am deeply offended well, that people tried to insist that they knew God's plan for me. When I did not want to get married and they told me, oh, I definitely would. That is very prideful. You don't know all of God's plan for me. If someone does not want to get married, 
you don't, you can't say, well, you're going to, so deal with it. Because you don't know what God's plan for that person is. Okay, you don't know that. Only God knows. And I'm pretty sure he's not going to confide in you his plans for someone else. He might tell you some of his plans for you. If you have the gift of prophecy, he may tell you, like, a little snippet of something for someone. For whatever reason he wants. But he's not going to tell you his whole plan. Okay? So stop thinking you know his plan for anybody. Because you don't. You don't have the right to tell me God is going to do this, that, or the other. Unless you have the gift of prophecy and he's told you. And none of these people, and that was not the case with any of these people. They just were insisting that they knew what it was going to be like for me. And I really am deeply offended by that. You're not... Yeah. So there are some things I find very... I really wish people would stop doing when they find out I and others like me are single. Um... Yeah. And I'm... I'm sorry to, again, to those of you who desire marriage and are sad that you're not married. I'm sorry I can't represent you. That's just not my experience. Um, but I, I do hope you are able to relate to at least some of this. Actually, I kind of hope you don't. Because these are really annoying, terrible things. That people really should stop doing. Um, so, if you are single, whether you want to get married or not. Whether you are content not being married yet or you're sad because you're not married yet if you are single i what is something what are some things that you really wish people would stop doing when they find out you're single i would love to hear it um especially if you're a guy and especially if you want to get married and you're sad that you're not married yet i mean i want to hear everybody's but those are two perspectives i don't have so, I would, I, I want to hear other people's perspectives because understanding, I find it easier to respect people when I understand them. So, yeah. Um, if you're mar engaged or married, because when I'm talking about single people in this video, I can't remember if I said that because that was 43 minutes ago. I am sorry for how long this video got. I had a lot of words. I'm sorry, but um, by single people, I meant people who are not engaged or married and never have been engaged or married. Oh man, don't even get me started. I can't even do a video about people who are widows and widowers. I'm not. Oh man, that's not a perspective I have at all. So if you are a widow or a widower and you are not remarried, yeah, feel free to add your thoughts on this as well like what do you wish people would stop doing when they find out that you used to be married and your spouse died and you're not married again that'd be a really interesting perspective too but um but by single i meant people who were never married never have been married are not married are not engaged if you are engaged um a widow or widower or married Think back to when you were single also and comment some things you wish people would stop doing when they find out people are single. Um, I think that would be really interesting. That would be a good conversation for us to have, I think. Um, thank you for watching. You know, I it is suggested to YouTubers that we... Um, invite people to subscribe to our channels and like Tiffany Dawn is like oh I do relationship advice and like 
Big Cat Rescue is like, we post videos of our cats. If you want to see funny cat videos, you can subscribe. That's not what they say, but they could. They really could. Because their tigers and stuff are very silly sometimes. But I do so many random things. So, if you want random videos that have nothing to do with any of the any previous video I've ever posted showing up in your newsfeed, feel free to subscribe. You don't have to. There's no pressure here. It's something I hate is when I'm feeling pressured to subscribe to a channel. It makes me want to not subscribe. You're not pressured. There's no pressure here. Just if you want to subscribe, subscribe, go right ahead. You're welcome to. Um, it is for almost 46 minutes long in this video. I'm sorry. I'm also sorry that I can't edit out all my awkward pauses. I don't have the software or the knowledge to edit my videos. I mean, I can like split them into shorter videos, but I can't like splice and dice and combine other multiple videos. And I don't, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you for watching. Charlie is very impressed that you were able to stick through all 46 minutes. He's very impressed. And don't you want something so cute and handsome being impressed with you? So yeah, thank you for watching and I hope you have a good day. Make sure to comment below. Um, I'll be trying to include some like links to some other YouTubers and some other like resources that go along with what I've been talking about in the description below. And I hope you have a really, really good day. Bye.